Welcome back, Tried and True Tribe. Today, we're going to discuss the importance of getting your 1099s out to your vendors on time this year. So if you've been in business for years or you're just starting your entrepreneurial journey, this video is for you. Now, if you hire a self-employed person to work for your business and you pay them $600 or more in non-employee compensation or straight cash during the year, you need to fill out a 1099 NEC form for that person. There are also other types of 1099 forms that are used to report income from interest to dividends, the government payments, and so many more. For more information, check out the IRS website. It'll give you a list of all the 1099s. You have the option to print and mail the forms or file online with the IRS and send digital and paper copies to your contractors and vendors. There is a limit on how many paper filings you can file with the IRS, which has been lowered in 2023 from 250 to only 10. So if you have 10 or more combined 1099s and W-2s, you must file them electronically. You must file corrections for any 1099s and W-2s the same way you filed the original forms. For example, if you have e-filed your 1099s or W-2s, you must also e-file your corrected form. And if you have filed by paper, your correction must be on paper. Simple, right? Here are some critical deadlines for business owners who need to file 1099s for money that you paid out. January 31st is the last day to e-file 1099 NEC forms that include non-employee compensation. It's also the last day to mail copies of both the NEC and MISC or miscellaneous forms to the recipients on time. February 15th is the last day for MISC forms to reach recipients on time. February 28th is the last day to file paper 1099 miscellaneous forms late. March 31st is the last day to e-file late 1099 miscellaneous forms. Certain payments that used to be reported on 1099 MISC are now reported on 1099 NEC forms. This includes payments to non-employees and self-employed individuals hired to do work for your business. So this helps the IRS make sure that people are properly reporting their income. 1099 miscellaneous forms should be used for reporting miscellaneous payments like rent, prizes, and awards. There is a list of all payment types that can be found on the IRS website for a source of truth. QuickBooks will continue to let you e-file your 1099 forms until May 7th of this year. But if you e-file after the January 28th deadline, QuickBooks Online will continue to print and mail copies to your recipients, but they can't guarantee that they'll be mailed by January 31st. So you'll need to request an extension for the 1099 filings with the IRS. E-filing by the deadline is the only way to make sure that we can help you meet both the IRS and delivery deadlines. States that don't require 1099 forms are Alaska, Florida, Illinois, New Hampshire, Nevada, New York, South Dakota, Texas, Tennessee, Washington and Wyoming. Now for every other state, check your state government's website to see if you need to file those 1099s at the state level. QuickBooks Online won't e-file your 1099s to your state agency. So you'll need to be able to download copies to file with them directly after you've verified that it's necessary. When you e-file with QuickBooks Online, your contractors are invited to view their 1099s through a free online tool called Workforce. QuickBooks Online will also print and mail the original copies to your contractors for no additional cost. I spilled the tea. I'm sorry. It is. It's true. All right. But corrected copies of your 1099 forms will not be printed and emailed to your contractors. So you would be responsible for delivering the printed corrected forms 
to your recipients. And when you print and mail them yourself, you're responsible for delivering those 1099 to your recipients or your workers or your vendors or whomever. Just in case you were not aware, you are not required to provide 1099s for payments that you made to vendors using a credit card or any other third party payment such as PayPal. They'll receive those directly from the financial institutions. Those financial institutions report these payments to the IRS. So there's no need to include them in your company's 1099 filing. Yep. So you can save some time there. Now, if you found this video helpful, please hit that subscribe button, give it a thumbs up and drop any questions that you have in the comments below. Until next time, stay financially savvy and thanks for tuning in to Tried and True Financial Services, where our core mission is to empower entrepreneurs by providing them with the knowledge and strategies to gain better control over their finances while upholding the strictest or the highest standards of ethics and integrity. Bye for now.